loving me I loving you Mothers and fathers Husbands and wives Sisters and brothers Friends for life Won't live in the past All I wanna do now Is making it last I'm Noreen Daly and welcome to another Making It Last podcast where it's all about helping us to have better relationships, not just with ourselves or with other people. There, There is so much going on. Every conversation now is in some way connected to the pandemic and all the different things surrounding it, the different issues, all that we've had to be dealing with, being in isolation, all of that. Now, with all of this, one of the things that, that continue to make me sit and, and, and wonder if people are paying enough attention to their mental health. People, because people have so much time now, or, or they think they have so much more time now, I see that people are exercising more. So they're taking care of the physical aspect. But in terms of our mental health, are we really paying enough attention to our mental health now i'm going to be having a conversation with cause green based in the united states of america specifically the state of utah and i know a lot of us especially the caribbean region that, that, that would be one of the states that we're wanting huh yes you heard me right utah he's a mental health advocate welcome cause Noreen, it's great to be with you and you're all invited to come to utah it's uh <laughs> it's an amazing place Beautiful scenery, Red Rock country, big canyons. It's an amazing place. Look it up. Google Utah and you'll you'll just you'll want to visit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That is so, not a paid advertisement from Tourism Board, but Utah is a great place. Okay. Okay. We 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 we're, we're going to work that out. We're going to work that out. Let's see what we can do. So we're going to be talking about what can family members or friends do to maintain their mental health. So Take us through that because you, you for for somebody who m might have missed missed the previous podcast that I had you on, where it spoke about your journey and why this issue is so important to you. Just tell us a little bit about that, and then let's get into the conversation. Well, eleven years ago, I attempted suicide a couple of times on the same day, and let's just say that I have a higher purpose to share my message. And so the good Lord saw fit not to have me pass away. And it wasn't just some wave of magic wand that I was able to come back. It has taken time, but it has been a conscious effort to really take care of myself. And so to the topic that you're talking about, if there's other people in your life, we need to look out for each other and look for some of those signs. I am so saddened every day when I read a post on Facebook or just hear through the family or friend grapevine that yet another person has passed away from suicide that I would call these the death of despair. And I made a pretty bold statement when COVID-19 started. Mm -hmm. I said that I believe there would be as many deaths of despair as there are from COVID-19 itself because of how we're being asked to react and to respond to it. Mm -hmm. That's just not a natural state. So to your point, we need to look out for each other and realize that everyone's going through their own unique journey. And then to be disconnected, unemployed, not have the basics that you might need. It's it's a very interesting time. Hmm. It is. It is. So so let's 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 rather than lumping everybody together, let's let's deal with friends first and then family members, even though some things will, I'm sure, transcend. But let's just be a little bit, you know, more specific in terms of friends. What would you what would be your advice to friends? In terms of friends, it's be proactive in your friendships. Don't assume that everyone is all right. And that's where you need to listen to that still small voice that you have that says, you know what? Reach out to someone. Make that phone call. Make that text. Stop by, even six feet away with a mask, whatever you're required to do, but do not disconnect from people. You never know what people are going through. And I would rather over communicate with my mm -hmm. friends than find out that, you know what, 
we lost so-and-so because they were alone and hopeless and no one reached out to them. So just because we need to socially distance, don't disconnect. If those are your greatest treasures in life, your relationships, well, they take maintenance. They take time. They take attention. So keep those friendships alive. And maybe you even have to swing the pendulum a little bit further than where you did in the past and reach out more to certain people. Mm -hmm. So don't assume that everyone is just okay. And then also don't assume that people don't want to hear from you. Do your very best. Make those phone calls. Send those texts. If they don't respond or it just isn't right for them, you've done your part. But do not retreat during these times. And just don't listen to your negative self-talk that says, oh, I don't want to bother this person. That may very well be someone trying to squelch you inside from reaching out when you're, you're going to be so glad that you did. So be bold. Be courageous with your friends. And don't disconnect it's 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 interesting you should say you know it's it's best to over communicate than not at all because there there are some people who it's not well for them they're not necessarily the ones to reach out but once you reach out to them they're so appreciative of of you making that connection and and reconnecting so you're absolutely right that you know make the effort to do that anything else in terms of friends noreen Mm -hmm. Well, Noreen, remember, you cannot not communicate. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you don't communicate, you are communicating the greatest thing of all is that you don't care. Yeah. So don't feel that, well, if I don't communicate, I'm not going to bother them. I'm not, you know, not going to overplay my hand with this relationship. You know what? Overplay your hand. Mm-hmm. Because... If anything, I want somebody to uh, accuse me of caring too much. I don't think there's anyone who cares too much. Hmm. We all want to feel appreciated and loved. Whether it's a handwritten note you throw in the post to someone, it's a text, it's an email, it's a voicemail message, especially with with, uh, social media. You can send messages through Instagram and Messenger where you don't actually have to talk to them. Right. You just hit the little record mm-hmm, button mm-hmm. and send an audio message for 20 seconds that just says, hey, I just want you to know I was thinking about you and you are loved and you are enough. I know you've been enjoying the conversation, but we're going to take a little break and get a word from our sponsor. So... The whole idea of a branding strategy sounded so exotic and so fancy to me. But after having several conversations with Neon, I now have a clearer understanding. I am sure of what my identity is, what it is that I want people to see Noreen Daily as. Thanks, Neon. Thanks, Split. It's interesting because you're you <laughs> you're saying something that that I'm actually going to practice because there's a, a particular friend of mine who she will always say I'm not one to stay in touch, and I was talking to a mutual friend recently and I said she continues to use that as a crutch, but you know maybe that's just her and it really it really shouldn't be a problem for me to then reach out to her rather than waiting because one of the things we've been saying but well, she hasn't done it so why should we do it. But yeah, right. Well, because it goes to back to what we were you've talked about on these episodes before, because we have these darn expectations, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we're trying to keep score. And well, they they owe me a phone call. <laughs> no, they don't. Maybe <laughs> yeah. you need to make 10 yeah. phone calls before yeah. they'll ever make one. True. I've got True. people in my life that are never going to be the ones who reach out. But the relationship stays alive because there's that that give and take. And many times you're the one that has to initiate Mm -hmm. the conversation. That's why I like some of these tools. If you don't feel like you can get on a phone call and have a 20 minute chat with someone, you can certainly send a voice message for 15 or 20 seconds and communicate volumes. If it's their birthday, come up with the corniest version of happy birthday and sing it to them. Mm -hmm. I've had people save for years, their audio messages that I've sent them to wish them a happy birthday. Hmm. Those little things make a difference. Make a difference. Yeah. 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 Or family. Be courageous. Yeah. Or family. Now, now, now family, 
family, <laughs> we can choose our friends, but sometimes mm-hmm. we can't choose our family, no, we cannot. right? And, mm-hmm. and our family can be the greatest challenges in our life because I think we do have some unrealistic expectations of our families that they should somehow reciprocate hmm. or how come they don't respond to me the way that I respond to them. They may never. My brother mm-hmm. could not be more opposite than me than day and night. Mm-hmm. And I just recognize it's not going to happen. So just like don't try to teach a pig to sing because it's just going to frustrate the pig and it's not going to work anyway. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not going to change those people. Yeah. So love them, respect them, understand what's important to them. And if they need time and space, be respectful of that. But also if they go silent. hmm and that's not like them, then you need to be courageous again and step up and get involved. I remember 11 years ago when I was going through all that I was going through, and I let a few people know after I'd gotten out of the hospital what had happened, there was no one there. Hmm. Because people don't know how to, how to deal with that subject. I mean, yes. what do you say to people? Yes. It's like when someone passes away, we don't know what to say. You don't need to know what to say. Mm-hmm. Just be there to yeah. listen many times. We, we try to think, well, we need to have all the answers. No, you don't. In fact, you don't need to have any answers. Mm-hmm. You just need to be there and listen. Be attentive. Demonstrate value. Remember, whatever we pay, whatever we pay attention to, we value. So if we don't have time for our family... And we make every excuse not to care for them, then we don't value them. Hmm. So whatever whatever you value, you pay attention to. It's like if I was a child and every time I walked in the house, my dad's reading the newspaper and he wouldn't even look over the newspaper to talk to me. What's more important, Hmm. me or the newspaper? So Hmm. put down, put down the phone, make eye contact. Ask good questions and listen. You want to develop a relationship with someone? You want to help a family member? You do not have to have the greatest dialogue in the world. Become a better listener. You'll change your relationship. Slow down. Pause. Listen. And allow yourselves to dance in the moment. You don't always have to fill it with noise we are such a noisy society yes just go into the silence together dance in that moment connect with other people but if we really love our families we'll take and make time for our family i don't care who you are if you're the president of a big company or a religious leader or whatever no one is too busy for their family if their family is most important. No one ever goes to the grave and says, gosh, I wish I spent more time at the office. (laughs) No, (laughs) the only regrets we have are, shoot, I wish I would have spent more time with my family. And remember, regardless of what you acquire, buy, or build, you're not taking it with you. All we'll ever have are the people we lived and loved and laughed with. There are no U-Hauls behind any hearse. You're not taking it to heaven with you. All mm-hmm. you're going to take is your experiences and your memories. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. That's true. And, and that's where mental health comes from. It's mental health. And, and that mental health is like a muscle. And if we're not ex- exercising compassion, mm-hmm. love, and understanding, then it atrophies like a muscle. So we need to stay mentally healthy by exercising our emotions and our feelings. There, there's and paying some, attention to the good feelings. Hmm. There, there's, there are some individuals though that that will say that I, it's it's difficult for me to express myself and to be emotional. What what advice would you would would you have for them? Be, be patient with them. Okay. You know, be be empathetic and realize that we're all built differently. We don't all have the same makeup. We don't have the same experiences. Some people are introverts. Some people are extroverts. Some people 
just have a whole frame of mind. Don't push them, but just demonstrate love. Meet them where they're at. That's the key. Meet people where they are. When people retreat, respect that. Meet them where they're at. Where they're at. If they're if they can only come to level two and you're at level ten, mm-hmm. so to speak, that can be very overwhelming for them. So dial it down. Mm-hmm. But come down to you know mm-hmm. level three. Mm-hmm. Meet them where they're at. Raise them up a little bit, and then take them with you for the ride. But you got to meet them where they're at. Yes. It's, it's very difficult. You can't motivate people. Motivation is from within. Inspiration. Now, ah, that's different. You can inspire people to make changes, but you've got to first understand them and meet them where they're at and realize what's important to them. And everyone's thinking of their radio, they're, you know, listening to their favorite radio station all day, every day. And that is WIIFM. What's in it for me? Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. in it for me? That's all people really think about mm-hmm. all day, every day is what's in it for me. So dial into what's in it for them. And that means you may have to sacrifice. You may have to give up your own self-interest to help provide something that they need. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we wouldn't let someone starve. We would find a way to give someone food. Okay, that's physical starvation. But what if you knew someone was mentally starving? What would you do to reach out to make sure they weren't starving mentally or Mm. emotionally? That's no different. Yes, yes, yes. What, what, as, as we're wrapping up, what then, if you have to describe it in a three-step process, what would that three-step process be for people, specifically family and, and friends to maintain mental health? What would that three-step process be? Step one, put on your own mask first. So if you're, ri- if you're uh, riding in an airplane and there's a problem with the mm-hmm. airplane, what do they teach you to do? Put mm-hmm. on your own mask first. So you've got to take care of yourself. You can't give something away that you don't for- first possess. So step one is take care of you. Two is for you to recognize that people are unique and you've got to meet them where they are and provide what they need. And then three is be consistent. You can't Mm. do it just once because then it's just a random act. Stay consistent. Give of yourself. Give love. Give acceptance. Time after time. Time after time. Time after time. Whether you get it back in return or not. Thank you so much, Kaz. You've said several things, but I believe for me, one of the things that will resonate with me is that when we're spending time with our family and friends and in helping them to maintain their mental health, we need to just stay in the moment because a lot of times, even when we're spending time with them, we're distracted with so many other things rather than just staying in the moment. Here's what I would challenge your listeners to. Mm -hmm. We we focus so much on doing Mm -hmm. and having Mm -hmm. take time to be in the moment. We're not human doings. We're human Mm. beings. Yes. Yes. Human beings. Be in the moment. Yes. Thank you so much, Kaz. This was Noreen. My pleasure, Noreen. Thank you. We will do this again. Hopefully one of these days in person. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. This was Making It Last Podcast. I'm your host, Noreen Daly. Until next time. Making it last is all Loving me, I loving you, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, friends for life won't live in the past. All I wanna do now is making it last.